Hello there, Ray here, and we are getting Cherry Blossom Biomes in Minecraft. They announced it today on the 14th of February because today is Valentine's. And this biome will consist of the Cherry Blossom Tree. This is also known as the Japanese Cherry. And in real life, it is common in East Asia. It can come in a few different variations that have different colors. But the most prominent one is these pink flowering ones. Now in real life, these trees have been cultivated over time, so they don't actually really produce any tasty fruit. Although the native variations of the Cherry Blossoms did used to have small fruits on them, but they were small and unpalatable. So just because it has the word cherry in it, don't expect this tree to actually produce us any new cherry food item. What the cherry blossom biome will offer is the stunning view that they will provide when you ever come across it. The trees themselves can be chopped down for the unique pinkish color wood. This would include the logs, the wood, the stripped variations, the planks, the stairs, the slabs, the fences, the gates, the doors, the trap doors, the pressure plates, and even the buttons. And let's not forget the signs, including the new hanging sign, and both boat and chest boats. Plus, the leaves themselves are super unique and look amazing, sort of like the flowering azalea, which is going to work really nice for builds. People can make these lovely flowering hedges, or like a solo bush in a garden. I have designed an automatic farm that lets you get flowering azalea leaves automatically. It also lets you get all the wood automatically. So I will be designing one for this new tree. And they come with their very own sapling, which is called a cherry tree sapling. You can use this to grow as many trees as you want, wherever you want. When you do plant a sapling and it tries to grow up, most trees in the game are slightly different in how they decide if there's enough room for them to grow up and what type of shape they grow into. I've helped design automatic farms for every single tree type. So it will be a fun challenge to try to design one for this very unique tree. So subscribe to see that. But with just this one tree added into the game, over 20 new items have been added in along with it. With so many items in the game, hopefully we see some more improvements to how they manage inventory. Like with the new pots coming into the game, it's possible for them to have some type of storage. What do you think? In this image here, not only can we see the trees and also the sniffer, but we can also see some blossoms on the ground. So this will most likely be a vegetation similar to like the grass that can be placed just above the grass block. These blossoms on the ground could be their very own flowers as they look like they do have little teeny stems. The trees also produce bee nests as we can see one right here. Like all the other saplings, you can put them inside of pots, which makes amazing decoration, along with the pink themed wood. Now, cherry blossoms have been quite popular in the game of Minecraft, people making their own mods for them or using in-game materials to make their own trees. So this will probably be a quite anticipated update. There is large cherry blossom orchards all throughout the world, like some well-known ones in Washington, D.C. But they are most famous from Japan, where even one of their coins has it on it. So where can you actually find this cherry blossom biome? Well, in real life, cherry blossoms need like a whole month of cold weather, almost around freezing, in order for the blossom to actually flower properly. As a generational gardener, I use this tool called Hardiness Zone in order to figure out what type of plants will grow well in your area. For cherry blossoms, because they need that cold, they recommend zones between 5 and 8. But Minecraft's not only sorted by cold to hot biomes, it's also sorted by how much precipitation each of those biomes have. And cherry blossoms in real life need a moderate amount of water, as in their native environment, they do get quite a bit of rainfall. So using this chart here, when it comes to the coldness, they probably fall like in the two. And when it comes to the wetness, they probably fall in the two to three. They're most likely found them by the forest or taiga biome. And in the big image here, we can see that the blossoms are kind of a higher altitude near some plains as well as some forest. This is very appropriate to Valentine's since these trees are known to produce tons and tons of amazing looking flowers. And in the same color that you associate with Valentine's, pink. Now despite this announcement coming on Valentine's, there was no announcement for the Valentine cape. This is a cape that accidentally got sent out to a couple players, but then was removed and it has this lovely heart on it as well as this daisy below. There was thoughts that maybe they were going to do like temporary capes for different holidays, similar to how they did in the past with Christmas cape and a New Year's cape, where it only lasts for a few days around the holiday and then it would automatically be removed. What do you think the cape was for? And in this announcement, they said the cherry blossom trees is the final thing that they're going to add into the 1.20 feature list. Despite that, we still don't know the official name for the update. It definitely seems to do something around the player going on journeys. In order to find these new biomes, all the new templates, all the bamboo material, as well as kind of a desert theme with the camels, archaeology, which are on the desert temples, desert wells, and desert villages, and the archaeological sites giving us access to the sniffer through the sniffer egg. And the sniffer would give us access to the new seeds as well as new decorative plants. What do you think the name should be. All these newly announced features are said to come out in a snapshot soon. To learn way more about archaeology, check out this playlist here all about the new snapshots, or this one all about new farms that I've already designed for 1.20. Now I'll let your fellow Minecrafters know about this new update, and you can play in the newest snapshots with me during my live stream. I'll let you guys know when I'm live through my YouTube community tab, my Twitter, or my Discord. So make sure you follow me on all those socials. I'm excited for 1.20. I hope you guys are as well. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye!